So in South Carolina, what happened? All of a sudden, Dutch is speaking, and we get into worship. I think James was leading worship, and I got caught up again. Now, let me show you what I saw. Go ahead, Aaron, and let's just run through. See, this is where this angel visited me in Corinth. Came down, stood there, visited me, and showed me seven years of training that he would have to take us through. This is what happened in South Carolina. All of a sudden... I saw familiar angel that I had met in my own dwelling, and four were posi positioned on the boundaries of the U.S. Now, I am saying that for a reason because everybody that knows me knows I'm just as Korean as I am U.S. because I travel the nations. I'm part of the body. But this year, the U.S. becomes an issue. My greatest focus I've had since 1986 is China. I've been all over it. I know it. I know what's happening. Worked in Russia all through the 80s. But this year, it's the U.S. Now, I say that with fear and trembling because I know the Lord so well. This year, He is looking at the U.S. All of the intercession through the ages that, have rolled up, that has rolled up to this moment is causing Him to look down and say, which way are they going to go? So, here's these four angels. Then all of a sudden, 51. I, I cannot tell you. I knew in a moment, without counting, that 51 angels surrounded this nation. Now, I am here to tell you, we are surrounded. I've never felt that before. I've never seen that before. We are fully surrounded in this nation, and they all had swords, and they were all in their sheath. That means they were not ready to go to war. But it also meant that a time was coming that they would be sent. And they would either come peacefully or they would come with sword in hand. And I did have enough sense when I came down to know that 51 of them meant they would go to each state. And that each state, what I saw in 2008, would be addressed one by one by one. It was an overwhelming vision, a shaking vision. We could not have had that had we not been at the right place at the right time in South Carolina. I said, Lord, now I know what you showed me in every state. You showed me a triumphant people that would learn how to gather. That would be filled with your glory. Now, I, I start trying to work this out with the Lord to help us. I said, now, Lord, you've already said we've got people in every city. You saved God. So you should have heard me. You saved Sodom and Gomorrah. And you would have probably, if you could have just found one person, would have probably saved it. And that told me Lot wasn't doing too good at that point. 
And all of a sudden, I knew we're at a moment in a nation. Now, I am here to announce this tonight. This night sets our moment. And he chose you to be here. He couldn't have had it without you. He knew who would come. He knew who had to come. Ann called me and said, I have to go to that meeting in Georgia. I said, okay. Jackie called and said, can you bring James and Leanne? I said, sure. All of you... Some way are in a moment. I knew Clay would be here. Now, here's where we are. Get a picture. Now, let me share just a few things, and then I want to end by sharing something that's important. See, this year, if you... I always look at the prophet that God wants to model each year. And I really meditate upon that prophet in the Word of God. This year, it's Ezekiel. Well, you know, he wrote some wild, crazy stuff. He saw into realms. And when I already knew that that was coming, and I saw into this realm, I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for Ezekiel. I, some way down... In history, they'll look back and see something I've written, recorded, and not think I'm nuts. <laughs> because Ezekiel, you could read that whole book and think, oh my. And he had to do crazy stuff. I, I don't think he was the naked one, was he? I don't think so. No. I remember telling Pam that. She said, thank God. Just thank God. She said, honey, because I looked at one guy. We were in one meeting, and I said, you know, if I worked out, I would look good, too. And she said, honey, we have been married 50 years. You have never worked out. You've got great hair, you've got a good face, and you're smart. Just use what you've got. Don't drift over into a lane that ain't going to work out for you. <laughs> 